Are you ever, you know, walking to class like the edgy teen that you are, but then, oh no, your delicious lunch of 50 satsumas just squirts out of your backpack? Well, then I have a little friend you might want to meet. Dancy! Today we're gonna be cooking up a fresh bot. Who look familiar to you? That would be because Dipsy is a close cousin of Slick. You'll build your own Dipsy. Whoa! You'll Whoa. cat it out in Fusion 360. You'll code it to beat the Satsuma Showdown battle. I think Whoa. some juice just squirted out. Now, in terms of how Dipsy ranks on the technical fronts, got a code heavy bot on our hands. Yeah, we do. Got some exciting stuff going on in the land of Modkit. Modkit. To start building Dipsy, you're gonna grab a Tinky Winky. You can follow the PDF build instructions for Slick, or you can follow along here. Dipsy's got this plow mechanism on the front, which is passive. There ain't no motor making it move, uh, but it'll work well for corralling those pesky Satsumas. All right, so to mount Dipsy's touch LED, you're gonna pull out a two by two corner connector, four one by one connector pins, your touch LED sensor, and a cable. So you're gonna mount your touch LED to the corner connector with the four connector pins, and you're gonna attach it to the plate on the back of Dipsy and plug it into the port of your choice, which Ellie's doing port 11. The touch LED is a pretty cool sensor, or I guess it's more of a detector, but you can code it to make your robot move or to make it light up when you poke it. And you're done, got him. Click the link in the description to go to the family-friendly <laughs> cat tutorial for Dipsy. So pop back right here. We're allowed one F bomb. Family-friendly content. Coding time. All right, let's get Modkit fired up and let's name and save the new project. Now, there are some hardware components that we wanna code. We still have our trusty drivetrain and Dipsy also has a touch LED. So let's just enter what ports are plugged into on the brain. Now let's dive into exactly what we're gonna be coding. So when you go to a robotics competition, there are usually two parts to a match. The first is called autonomous mode. The cool kids call it auto. During autonomous, the robot's usually receiving no input from the driver and it's only executing pre-written code commands. It's basically how you program Tinky Winky for Rainbow Road. Autonomous mode is then followed by teleoperated mode, <laughs> we call it teleop in the biz, where the robot is driver controlled. So for the Satsuma showdown battle, you'll code Dipsy to have an autonomous routine and you'll code Dipsy to be driver controlled during teleop. The autonomous portion of the battle will be 15 seconds long and the teleop portion of the battle will be a minute and 45 seconds long. So let's add a controller component into the mix because we need it for teleop. So let's actually start off by programming the robot to be driver controlled. So that can happen in the robot panel right here. So since we dragged in the controller, well, the controller icon has popped up on our drivetrain component. So we can click on that. Uh, don't be overwhelmed because you'll need to change two of these settings to make your robot drivable. There are two main styles of driving your robot. There's arcade drive where one joystick on your controller controls the movement for your whole drivetrain. Some drivers say this is easier, but 
to achieve arcade drive, all we need to do is change the A channel to drive forwards and backwards and the B channel to turn left and right. What this does is the A channel is in charge of looking at how far forwards or backwards your left joystick has moved vertically or along the Y axis and translates that to your whole robot moving forwards or backwards. Whereas the B channel looks at how far your left joystick has moved side to side or along the X axis and translates that to your robot turning left or right. P.S. If you want to drive with your right hand, do what you have over here in the D and C channels and then set A and B back to none. Okay, so that was arcade drive. The other driving style is called tank drive. So with tank drive, the left joystick controls forwards and backwards movement for the left side of your robot and the right joystick controls the forwards and backwards movement for the right side of your robot. Robot trainers generally consider this style more difficult to master, but I think it ultimately gives you more control over your robot. So if you want to code Dipsy for tank drive, make sure everything says none except for the A channel, which we'll switch to L or left drive and the D channel, which we're going to switch to R or right drive. So in this case, the A channel translates how far forward or backwards your left joystick is moved into forwards or backwards movement for the left side of your drivetrain. And the D channel does the same thing for the right side of your drivetrain. So whether you decide to do arcade or tank drive for the battle, you'll probably want to test out both. In order for the robot's brain to connect wirelessly to the controller, we first have to pair the controller to the robot brain. So let's do that real quick. So make sure that your robot brain has a battery and radio plugged in and make sure that your controller also has its own battery and radio. By the way, the radios are what allow your brain and controller to communicate. Make sure the brain and the controller are powered off. You're gonna grab your tether cable and then plug one end into the brain and the other into the controller. You're gonna turn the brain on and you should see the light on the controller come on too. So you'll know that they're paired when the tether icon pops up on the brain. Then you can remove the tether cable and they should start communicating. If you see the radio bar icon pop up on the brain, that means it worked and they're talking to each other. Okay, so now we can download our teleop code. My arms are too long for the ceiling. <laughs> Test it out. Make sure that your controller is on too when you're testing. Now we are gonna write our autonomous code for Dipsy. Before we dive in, we're gonna define exactly what we want Dipsy to do for our autonomous routine. So for the battle, when we run the code on our robot, the first thing we wanna have happen is for the touch LED to light up red to let us know that the autonomous routine is not yet running. As soon as the battle starts, we wanna start our autonomous routine by hitting the touch LED. The touch LED will then light up green to let us know that autonomous has begun. In terms of what the robot will do during auto, let's say for right now, now, drive forward across the battle arena and then come back to us in time for the teleop portion of the battle. Finally, we want the touch LED to go back to red as soon as autonomous mode is over, aka as soon as our 15 seconds for autonomous are up. All right, all right, let's start off in the blocks tab for our touch LED. Let's drag in our when start so that our robot knows to run whatever comes after it. So like we talked about, the first thing that happens when our code runs is we want the touch LED to turn red. So there are two blocks we're gonna use to make that happen. First, we turn the light on in the touch LED and then immediately after that, we set the color to red. So you can save and test if you want. We're gonna make sure code runs, touch LED turns red, boom, yay. So now let's make it turn green when we poke it. So right after our touch LED turns red, we're gonna drag in a forever loop. What a forever loop does is it runs through whatever code blocks you put in here, top to bottom, over and over and over again, very quickly. So what we wanna put inside this forever loop to get checked over and over and over again is a check for the touch LED being pressed. So we're gonna drag in an if statement. So the way an if statement works is if a condition is met or a certain event happens, then execute whatever code blocks we drag in here. So in our case, it's if the touch LED gets tickled, for that we're gonna use this block here, then, we change the color to green. So you can visualize what's happening here. We run the code, the touch LED turns on and turns red. Then we begin checking over and over and over again. Is it poked? If it has, then we go inside here and change the light to green. All right, now we're gonna test it. Awesome, that is so rad. Now we're gonna make Dipsy move when we hit the touch LED. But you'll notice in the touch LED tab, we can't access any commands for our drivetrain. Now we could just put the same code that we have here in the drivetrain tab, but there's actually a a simple solution that allows us to control the drivetrain from the comfort of our touch LED tab here. But it means that we have to understand a critical concept in coding, the function TM. You can go really, really deep with functions, but for tonight, you're gonna define a function in your brain as this. The secret box where you can put some code blocks that make your robot do something. Now, this box is secret because the code blocks inside of it will not be activated unless you call your function. By the way, I'm gonna use the term functions, but you'll also hear functions called methods. Modkit calls them events. 
but I'm gonna call them functions. Okay, so back to our secret function box. We're gonna create one in the drivetrain tab. We know we want Dipsy to move forward a certain number of inches and then backwards the same number. We can find that exact number later. We're just gonna take a guess for now. Let's also set the drivetrain speed to 100% because we gotta move faster than the default speed of 60% if we're gonna make it back before auto ends. So let's click these children under a when start block. Except we don't want this function to run when we hit the start button. We want this function to run when we call it. So we gotta give the function a name. We're gonna click new and we're gonna name our function something descriptive or not. I'm calling mine quiggles. So now when the function quiggles is called, we're gonna execute the commands in here. So we've created our function, but it ain't never gonna run unless we call it. Let's call our function when the touch LED is poked right after the light turns green. So modkit uses the term broadcast instead of call, whatever. Now, as soon as our touch LED is poked, light turns green, we call our function, AKA open the secret box. And now all of these commands run. Go, go forward, go backward, woo! Finally, we want the touch LED to turn back to red as soon as our 15 second autonomous mode is over. Right after we call the function here, we're gonna start a timer for 15 seconds. In terms of turning the touch LED back to red after the 15 second timer, we could just drag in the command to make it turn red again, or we could just store these commands in their own function and call the function when we need it. Time for a secret box. Let's pull out the light on and set color to red blocks and store them in a new function with a descriptive name. Then we can just call this function at the beginning of the code and again after the 15 seconds. So whenever it gets called, the light goes back to red. So in this case, putting those two blocks in a function didn't save us that much space in our main chunk of code or make it that much more efficient which is usually the point of functions, but I'm trying to help you build a habit that will make you a more legit coder. We are always on the hunt for an opportunity to make a function. This whole process, it has a name. It's called a functional decomposition when you break things down into functions. All right, let's save it and test it, kid. Don't forget to go back and measure how many inches you actually want Dipsy to move forward in the back and change the code to reflect it. Actually, you can do whatever you want in autonomous. Just make sure that you get back to home base before the 15 seconds are up. This is a Satsuma Showdown time. Here's how it's gonna roll. You have two minutes total to get 50 ping pong balls, I mean Satsumas, through the goal. As you know, the first part of this battle is autonomous mode. This is where you activate your routine with the touch LED. Only rule, you have just 15 seconds for this routine. Make sure you start behind the golden arch, TM, and you can't touch the controller while auto is running. The second part of the battle is teleop mode. You have one minute and 45 seconds to get additional Satsumas through the goal. Remember, you gotta get to 50. Best of luck.